hello everybody and welcome to your long awaited next tutorial I'm sorry uh, for the long wait I actually indeed thought that I had made this tutorial and actually uploaded it to YouTube but I indeed never even made this tutorial yet I don't know if I guess I'm overwhelmed with work and stuff where I'm like losing my mind or whatever but anyways here's this tutorial coming to you now this tutorial may seem a little bit confusing to you at first but I'm trying to break it down to make it as simple as possible so hopefully you guys can understand the concept is simple just the way that I've um, put it it might seem a little bit complicated to you guys but I will break it down uh, so let's get right into it <laughs> so right now we want to include these three um, things right here because we're going to be using I don't think we need this right here I'm not sure um, but we're going to be using uh, random numbers so um, include those uh, so let us get right into the pixel collision function now um, the pixel function uh, consists of six arguments or six items in the parameter and um, these are is these are the buffer, the x and y of the player, the x and y coordinate of the player, the width and height of the player, and the color which the player um, is supposed to collide into, or what will happen if the player collides into that color. So what we're going to be using is a function called getPixel, and this takes three arguments. It takes the buffer, which we're trying to check for the pixel for, and the x and y coordinate for the pixel. So right now we you see um, you see a lot of things. You see x minus one, comma y, and you see or if get pixel is equal to x, comma y minus one, or if it's equal to x plus width plus one, or if it's equal to x plus height plus one. And you guys are like, what in the world is going on? Well, basically, we're basically just checking to see if all sides are actually indeed uh, hitting the hitting the player or hitting the rectangle so um a lot of you might be saying well why don't you actually check the x and y pixel of the player and why am i doing like x minus one why am i doing y minus one why am i doing x plus width plus one and y plus width plus one like why do i have this one everywhere well the reason being is that if we go down to our actually uh, draw commands notice that our player this is the player and this is the enemy okay so our our player is drawn after the enemy and this is very crucial um, to why I've set it up the way it is now if the player was drawn before the enemy then I wouldn't have to have this one there I could erase this right here so um, you guys are saying wait why is that so or why did you make it too complicated on us or why did you make it too complicated on yourself well uh, the way I've done it is this is the safe way to do it it's a safe way to do it because um, no matter which order you put the player in it will work properly if for some reason that you accidentally put um, if you've done it the other way and you put the player after the enemy then it wouldn't work properly you guys would be ripping your hair out you'd be like why isn't it working and it's not because your code is wrong it's because of the order that everything is drawn to and I know some of you guys are like what is this guy talking about um so let me explain this better to you guys so uh let me erase this right here and um let's let me draw the enemy okay so the enemy is red the player is um the player is blue so this is the enemy right here okay and the player this is the player right here okay so um we want to see if this player collides with the enemy right there okay so let's take the enemy uh and let's move it so we're moving the enemy now say uh, we only checked for the X position so say let's look at this right now so let's go back to our code um let's let's forget about this say we're checking to see the the actual 
the pixel color of the coordinate x, y. Okay, so if we go back to paint, x, y is at the top left corner of the rectangle, so it's right here. So once the once the player once the player touches the red and overlaps with the red, if you notice, um, it's on it's on the color red. So in reality, it should collide. But then, if we actually look, if we actually get the pixel for X and Y, that particular pixel is blue, because the blue play, the player, since it's drawn after the enemy, is overlapping the player, and therefore, since it's overlapping, then the X and Y coordinate is not red; it's actually indeed blue. So the reason why I check for X minus one. So if we go back to our code. The reason, oh sorry, the reason why I check for x minus one is because when you check for x minus one, then it will collide right. Sorry, it will collide right before you actually touch it, but it will actually look as though you touch it. So right as the box is say right here, it checks for um, x minus one and the and the y coordinate. So if it when the box reaches right here it will be like it collided. Now you guys might be saying well it's not touching. It, I know it isn't touching but it will give it the illusion as though it is touching because it's so close. And that's why I did minus 1. If I was to do say minus 10 or minus 20 then it would be unrealistic. But once you do um, x minus 1 then it will be so close because pixels are so tiny it would be so close that the edges would basically the edges would be touching like so but they wouldn't be overlapping if you understand what I mean and then therefore it will say that it has collided so if I go back to the code right here um, let us look at it so we've we've already um, calculated how we could collide with the top left corner now if we do um, if we check for the pixel for buffer x y minus 1 so let's go right here so basically it's checking to see if it has collided at the bottom right here so it's checking for side collision and for bottom collision right now and if we go right here we say or if get pixel buffer x plus width plus one so it's basically checking the right side of our rectangle so it's basically saying that if this side is touching if any any point on this side if this point right here is touching this um, rectangle right here then it, there's a collision and then it's checking if the bottom point is touching right here and then if any of those are true then you have collided now some of the things you, there could you could run into some problems with this but you won't run into too much problems if we look at it right, like right here it says get pixel buffer x and y plus plus height plus one right so if you go to paint it's basically checking for this point right here so if you were to say collide with it like this like so then pro then it wouldn't be a collision um but with this program right right here um it probably won't be much of a problem you could make a code that could check for each of the four corners to check it for a collision but it's up to you but so let us look so uh, since we've gotten the gist of that or i hope you guys got the gist of that now let's look farther down into the code and i will come back up to this um later on during the tutorial so uh, right here we say that if notice right here I have X and Y for the enemy and I have capital X and Y for the player I'm sorry if that's confusing but yeah so if I say that if um, the player has collided with something that is red right that's a color then I make a random number for the I generate a random number for the for the enemy X and the enemy Y and then the it will move to that position now you might be saying why am I making the random number from screen width um, minus width um, why don't I make it from screen width 
Well, remember that um, the x and y coordinate is for the top left of the shape, right? So if the x coordinate is equal to screen width, then it will start drawing it from the screen width, and then it will be off the screen. If I start drawing from screen width, subtract width, then the farthest it could draw it is right here, and therefore the enemy will or the play the enemy will never be off the screen if that makes sense to you. So once you do that, it's basically saying if you collide with it, then it will move to a new position, sort of like pick pick and sticks. If you guys have seen Lucica Mage's um, videos, uh, yeah, she made a game called Pick and Sticks, which is fairly popular around YouTube. But yeah, it's kind of like that. And um, it's so you guys can upgrade it with scores and stuff. But yeah, and then I just have the basic movements um, for the player, and then um, we do the drawing and everything. Now notice I have a comment right here that um, this has to come first. Now you guys might be wondering why this line has to come first and why clear bitmap can't be last. Well, if we look at it, the pixel collision is looking for the pixel inside the buffer, not on the screen, right? We could change it to screen right here if we wanted to, but we're checking for the buffer. So if we if we put clear buffer at the bottom, okay, it would draw everything to the it would draw everything to the buffer, and then the buffer would draw things to the screen. But then it, we clear the bitmap buffer, so the buffer has nothing in it. So when it comes to the update, according to pixel collision, there's nothing in the there's nothing in the buffer, right? So then everything is gonna be black. But if we were to put clear bitmap here, and then we draw everything to the buffer, and then draw the buffer to the screen, there, there's still whatever there's still content in the buffer. All of this content that we drew is still in the buffer. So even in the update loop, it's still the all the contents are still there until we reach clear bitmap. So make sure clear bitmap is before you draw everything to the buffer again. Uh, the drawing and stuff won't change. You won't have added flickering or anything. Everything's the same. Just make sure that clear bitmap is at the top. So if I was to run this program just to show you what we get, um, this is what we get right here. So if I move player, if I touch it, it moves to a new location. Sorry, if I touch it, it moves, touch it, moves, etc., etc. So it's a little fun thing you can do, kind of like picking sticks, I guess. And if you guys want, you guys can add a score or whatever. So I guess it's a fun little game. And you could also, you could also modify this into a tag game. So you could be like the blue if the blue person's it. So you can make this into a two-player game. So the player two will use W A S and D, and player one will use the arrow keys. And then if you touch the player, then that player becomes it. And then whatever. And then you can make the player it. And that's it. Slightly faster than the player that's not it. So it's easier for them to catch them. If that makes any sense. Uh, so uh, you know what? I'll pause the video right now and modify it into a little tag game just to show you guys. And then that'll be it. So okay. <clears throat> so I have. Oh, sorry. I thought it wasn't even recording. Okay, so I have just done up a little tag thing. It doesn't even really work that great. <laughs> but it generates a little bit of enemy AI as well. So the enemy moves away from you when it's not it. And when it is it, then it moves towards you. Uh, it's a bit hard to catch the enemy because you can't move diagonally. But when you touch the enemy, then it becomes it. And then yeah, so on and so forth. So I hope you enjoy this, just showing you different ways you can modify your program. Um, and yeah, so I probably will put up this code on my website. It's not even really well written. I just rushed it. But anyways, I might do it. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and bye.